Yeah. Uh, And I think this is one of those situations where, you know, sometimes people say, you know, green is the only color that people, some people see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was one of those moments where green didn't matter. Right. When you are playing these games, are you playing them to win or are you playing them to not lose? Because your strategy is very different. Oh, okay. So then we get the reception. Mm-hmm. It's some craziness going on at the reception. Like that, that, what was we doing? What kind of dancing was we doing? 40s. 40s, 50s. You know, they, no, 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 no. I'm talking, talking about, about the, the cousin. Kitty. Or, yeah, was that yeah. her name? The, the, with the yellow one? The with kitty. the ponytail? The movie, the movie that was star. Kitty. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. She not related. Mama <laughs> said, get that. Uh-huh. Handle that. <laughs> Handle that. Welcome back to session 118, Movie Mental Breakdown, Crazy Rich Asian. Today's mood music is brought to you by Vava, and it is entitled My New Swag. Y'all see, we tried to do all the Asian folks mm-hmm. this uh, month that go with the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Yes. Peep that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get the cast out of the way. Now, this movie had a gigantic... Yes. It's probably one of the largest casts we've had in a movie probably ever. Um, But we're not going to go into everybody. We're just going to hit the main players. The mains. Mm -hmm. So the two love interests, the two main people are uh, Rachel, who is played by Constance Wu. Nick Young, because you got to say his whole name because everybody (laughs) know him as Nick Young. Junior. Uh, <laughs> who is played by Henry Golding. Uh, Aquafina plays Pecklin Go. And I swear I messed her name up so many times in this movie. I was like, are they saying Peking Pecklin? I thought they were saying Piglin the first time that I watched the movie years ago. And I was like, Michelle, just look at the cast names. I know. You're doing too I, much. And I felt so bad. I was like, oh, I just chopped that all up. Uh, Astrid is played by Gemma Chan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mama uh, Eleanor is played by Michelle Yo, aka Crouch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon mm-hmm. star. I will always know her as that. Uh, the cousin to Peck Lin is played by Kim um, Ken Jung. That's her daddy in the movie. Oh, it's her daddy. Uh huh. Oh, hmm. it's weird, but that's her daddy. Okay. okay. I couldn't tell what the relationship was. Uh-huh. Th- those are uh, mom and dad. Oh, oh well, that explains the the scene where, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't know what the dynamics are here. Mm-hmm. Um, but his name is Go Y Mun. Mm-hmm. Who else is in there that was important? Uh, we, we have the two people that are getting married, which is mm-hmm. the whole reason why they're going. Yes. Uh, which is the actors' names are Chris Pang and uh, Sonoya Mizumi or Mizumo, excuse me. All right, and then the grandma. Uh, they didn't actually say her name; they just called her Grandma. Grandma <laughs> <laughs> is played by Lisa Liu. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, there's a whole bunch of other people in this movie, but we will not be naming everybody. Mm-hmm. Now, before we start, I just want to let the interns know that this movie had a lot of yummy people in it. <laughs> Men and women. Mm-hmm. They were all beautiful. Yeah, nice, good-looking mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And the level of wealth <laughs> oh, in this movie. Part. Like, I went and researched what these things would cost. Girl, I was like, I am a peasant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am a peasant. Not a peasant. <laughs> well, I mean, the play on words, crazy rich Asians, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Crazy rich yeah, and crazy, comma, rich. <laughs> 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 you know? punctuation matters yes <laughs> yeah uh so you know as we're trying to revamp mmb y'all we may not necessarily be going again scene by scene uh in this movie uh because we're trying to tighten up a couple things and give you more mental health based stuff so we may not say in this scene um mm-hmm. just for gp and we may um jump around a little bit yeah. based off what is relevant to the conversation at the time yeah, and this movie didn't have very many scenes, actually. So no, it's a, a really straightforward. Straight it's, this is real to me. This is really one of those Hallmark movies that, like, you know, at the end it's going to work out. 
Disney movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't say all that, but it is very, you can tell that the person who wrote these books also got an Asian director, Asian casting. Like you can tell that they were true and it's a certain vibe that uh, foreign films have in whatever category they are in. If it's a fighting film, if it's a romance film, it's a, if it's a comedy film. And I do appreciate that they are true <laughs> to form every time you know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so there's only so much I think that we can kind of pick apart here. But with that said, I did think the, speaking of opening scenes, the quote that was at the beginning uh, mm -hmm. let China sleep for when she wakes, she will shake the world by Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, yeah. And I was like, that's a very interesting quote to put at the beginning of a movie. And by him. And, and, and to this type of movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish I could understand the mind behind that. Well, Cause you know, you know Napoleon just, was special. Yeah, because uh, it does definitely seems, you know, I was like, is this in reference to the characters themselves? Is this in reference, like, literally to China? You know, I wasn't quite sure. I'm sure Napoleon was talking about something different, but I'm talking about the mm -hmm. director. Mm -hmm. Well, I think overall with Napoleon and the movie, it shows that the Asian, well, China specifically is a force to be reckoned with. Like, they are very um, direct, very much a go-getting nation mm -hmm. and it's not going to be no excuses you're going to get this done mm -hmm. so it makes me wonder based on that if they were talking about the uh the young lady that nick was dating i can't remember her name rachel rachel, rachel yes mm -hmm. if they are talking about rachel because she was a, a force to be reckoned with you know she was mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense uh one thing that i did appreciate is that even though it was really only shown once in the film uh, right at this beginning part was that, you know, there was a little racism um, and the display of their wealth, like off the bat mm -hmm. and that you cannot judge a book by its cover, right? That you have no idea what money mm -hmm. a person has. You have no idea somebody's background and that you may actually get yourself caught up if you are having these like expectations and ideas about a person that you don't know nothing about. Yeah. And yeah. you might lose your job. Mm. That part. <laughs> yeah. I found you it. You about to lose your job. <laughs> <laughs> I found it interesting. Um, just the level of disrespect that the front desk people were displaying. You know, you see that this person is coming in out of the, the wetness mm -hmm. of the rain. And you can tell if you look at them that these people obviously have money. They didn't come in there looking crazy. The the woman got on a coat coat mm -hmm. with furs and stuff on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids is all decked out. The uh, auntie is all decked out. Um, it's just, It just wasn't wisdom. <laughs> the way. Yeah, it I, I don't think I felt like they didn't read the room like you wasn't paying attention. You just ri literally paid attention to this woman's ethnicity. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Uh, and I think this is one of those situations where, you know, sometimes people say, you know, green is the only color that people, some people see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was one of those moments where green didn't matter. Right. You know, that yeah. my own internal biases and my own internal prejudices mattered more to me than bringing in money for the hotel. Mm -hmm. Cause you was about to lose the money mm -hmm. if she would have left and didn't call Paw Paw. Mm -hmm. Well, technically, she was staying in her own hotel because they had just exactly. bought it. Exactly. And, and he the was thing so excited. It, he was like, <laughs> get her the suite. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing? These are the new owners. What? I'm trying right. to sleep. He's right. like, I'm trying to get up out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sick of y'all. <laughs> and I, I like the way she kept her poise and didn't even throw that out. That I, Do you realize I own this? Like, she didn't. She didn't now, do she was petty. About that flow, <laughs> I was like, I'm, "But good for her." She needs Eleanor. To be, she needs to be. Petty. Eleanor is the mother-in-law you don't want. Well, in that instance, she needed to be petty because they just tried to play mm -hmm. her. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I think you know one of the the biggest moments you know since after that scene is we get introduced to the young couple, 
Uh, so we have Nick and Rachel. Wait, what? You, you're taking us too fast. What? Now you can't skip this part because the opening scene for Rachel is her teaching. Mm-hmm. And the specific thing that she talks is a, talks about is when you are playing these games, are you playing them to win or are you playing them to not lose? Because your strategy is very different oh. because that comes back to bite the, the mama in the butt mm-hmm. at the end of the movie. So I do think that that like is a, a, a good foreshadowing scene about like how you live your life and how you show up. Because if you are playing to win, there's a different energy that you have versus I'm just not trying to lose. There's a desperation to that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you could see it on the young man's face mm-hmm. when he um, lost. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I definitely think I agree with you. I think that is good foreshadowing. Um, because that's one of the things I wrote in our note, my notes is our brains hate to lose. Mm-hmm. But, mm. but I, I liked her, uh, at least in this example, I liked her teaching style. She used interactive activities to help her students learn mm-hmm. a concept. Because mm-hmm. economics is boring for mm-hmm. the, the general person. Mm-hmm. Now, for people who are economic heads, that's a little bit different. Right. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we get an introduction now into the young couple and this is where we learn, you know, she really has no idea who this man truly is. (laughs) She just knows him for what he's shown her. And, you know, I think that's a, it's one of those weird moments where, you know, when people say I lie because I love you, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) He's holding back a part of himself that he truly hasn't revealed to her. She Mm -hmm. has no idea, but, in the background, it's for good reason. Yeah. You know, when somebody has money at that level, I imagine it's very difficult for that person to understand and know whether or not somebody is with them for them or with them for their money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have to, if I'm looking for love, like genuinely and not just attachment, Mm -hmm. then I have to approach it differently. But how long is too long to hold on to that lie? That part, I don't know. Because I can't quite tell how long they had been together. A year. A year? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. My The issue that I see in this situation is it's a bit different because of who he is, the heir, the amount of money his family has, as well as their... Um, community is so far reaching Mm -hmm. Um, being all the way over here in the States and you still are having this impact to where people know what's going on in real time, Mm -hmm. which we'll see in a second. That was like, Mm -hmm. I can understand why he did it, but I think he definitely could have begun to begun to have those conversations with her based off of like who she showed herself to be because she's from what we're seeing. She's always been a very kind, a very generous, generous and considerate person. Not mm-hmm. generate. That's a that's a different word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and I was thinking about like the lack of privacy mm. as well because he's a celebrity. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, all the women in the cafe did was take a picture of this man, and it Blew again up. within seconds, it was everywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, talk about viral. That was the literal definition. Like he went viral mm-hmm. amongst their community. And, you know, how violating I can imagine if this was a real situation now for the movie, of course, it didn't, he didn't seem like he felt violated, but, uh, I would imagine as an individual, if I knew that I was just enjoying my time and talking with my partner about, you know, going to visit my family. And then literally my mom is calling me, Mm -hmm. asking me, and I haven't even walked out the restaurant yet Mm -hmm. from Bible study. And I just... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> talked to her about going to Singapore. Like I, I just want, I just talked to you about that. And my, now my mom is calling me like, what, what is going on? You're psychic. I don't understand what's going on. Well, he peeped the girl had took the picture. Yeah, of he did. At least. Mm-hmm. I think it, it shows how normal it is for him to have always grown up in this, mm-hmm. especially because they have old money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very old money. I think they said like the early 1800s, they moved from, China, China to China. Singapore. Mm-hmm. So even before then, mm-hmm. to be able to move your whole to the jungle, yeah, yeah. and yeah, so and establish it because <laughs> mm-hmm. 
that tiger was scaring me a little bit. You know, I'm thinking of like in real time, you all hear hunting lions and tigers and bears in the jungle. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Man. You know, and then I was thinking about the mom in this scenario as well. You know, (sighs) how trying to put myself in her position on how off putting that could be, even though it's somewhat, it seems like it's somewhat normalized a little bit in their culture, but my son didn't even get a chance to tell me. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking about the gossip in the Bible study. That part. We in Bible study and we 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 can't think about nothing else. So we supposed to be thinking about Jesus. Well, she kept trying to redirect them. Exactly. <laughs> it did surprise me for some reason that they were reading the Bible just because you automatically um kind of assume that it's going to be more geared towards their cultural um religious practice versus the colonized version mm-hmm. of, their, of religious practices. So I was like, wait, they reading the Corinthians and stuff. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I know this scripture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> again, off-putting. There was no other word that I could put there. Um, and I would think um, disappointing as well. Yeah. You know, that I don't get a chance to share in a moment on my own with my child that the world essentially knows before I do. Mm -hmm. And now we don't get a chance to really have a private moment. Mm -hmm. And even for Nick, the fact that he like, he can't even share that with his mom first. Mm -hmm. Like he, there may have been a certain point in time before they got to Singapore that he wanted to let her know that he was coming home, that he was a bring, he was bringing a young lady and that he, that he wanted her to meet. She's special to me. Like he got to not, he didn't get the chance to say any of his own words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This gives me the idea of like celebrities that have had breakdowns before, mm-hmm. you know, circa maybe I think it's 0708 with Britney Spears, mm-hmm. um, things like that. Uh, you've even see it a little bit um, with the Northwest. It's kind of, I won't say she's had a breakdown. I think that's way too strong of a word, but you've yeah. seen her be like, don't take pictures, no pictures. Like she doesn't want to be photoed. Mm-hmm. Kid Cuddy. Kid know? Cuddy. You know, mm-hmm. that constantly being viewed that nothing that you have is that's your private. own. Even with uh, Kiki Palmer, the young mm-hmm. lady that took a picture of her even mm-hmm. when she told her no, yeah. and she still took a picture and people were like, well, she's a celebrity. She should expect that. She she can expect that, but she still should have the right to say no, and her no should still mean no yeah, and be consent. Yes, 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 be respected. Yeah, it 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 made me think about that. You know, I know this is a film, so it wouldn't go this far, but I would imagine in a real world setting that that's what the feeling would be like. Oh my god, here we go again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I can't enjoy nothing. Right, right. Like, I'm just on display like an animal at the zoo. Mm-hmm. Mm. It reminds me of, you know, the Michael Jacksons, the Princes, mm-hmm. the Rihannas, the Beyonce's, Whitney Houston. I Whitney remember Houston. Whitney Houston went off real bad. Uh, Diana. Once. Princess yeah. Diana. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. You know, ultimately, yep. that is what killed her. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So th- those were kind of like all of the things that I was thinking about, you know, in the setup of this, mm-hmm. this next set of things going on. But. You know, I was like, man, I feel I feel for him because that's a very specific type of way of living. Cost the fame. And then he mm-hmm. had no choice at that point but to tell Rachel about his uh, wealth, because it, I mean, like if she see it, his face is plastered all over the Internet. And it's like, but why? She technically people- didn't. I mean, he technically didn't still tell her at that moment oh. in the cafe. No, yeah. not at the cafe. Well, I don't think he knew in the cafe, did he? Yeah. Did he find out in the cafe? Yeah, he knew because the girl, well, th- his mom called and said, how do you- he asked, how do you know that? And oh. then he saw the girl leaving and he was like, oh, don't worry about it. And it wasn't until they were the, plane, the plane, mm-hmm. you know, and she was like, uh, how can, can you we afford, afford this? this? Because th- that is like right. $20,000. But that's what I'm saying. He like, he still, he didn't, he didn't tell her, but. He he didn't have a choice at the oh. until when he got on the plane. He didn't have a choice, but to but tell he her. still omitted the truth right. because it was her friend who told her for real, for oh, real. That's oh, that's true. Right. about that's true. the level, the level of wealth. Because yeah. we, when we think rich, we say, "Oh, you you know yeah, maybe a millionaire." Million. Uh huh. No, 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 no. They got mil- They are probably trillionaires as a family, mm-hmm. and all of them are rich. All yeah. of them, yeah. Cause they said 40 mil on this wedding like that. 
That's I said, 40 million. I need to work on my life. <laughs> That's 40 million. That's whatever. Yeah. And like that was that was normal. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I the, this next kind of few pieces here, I appreciated like Rachel's mom trying to prep her yes. on Chinese custom because you can tell that Rachel grew up in America mm-hmm. and is very westernized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so she doesn't really understand like, you know, she understands some rules, it seems like, but like she wanted she wanted her to choose a lucky color. Right. You know, very traditional. Tra- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and this was also foreshadowing on mom's part that she was like, you know, you may look it. Mm-hmm. So don't confuse that. Just because you look Chinese, that don't necessarily mean you are Chinese. Yeah, she said yeah. the outside and the heart, but the mind is not. Mm-hmm. And that's the, that is a true statement for yeah. most uh, first generations, you know, yeah. immigrant. Yeah, I can think, imagine as a hard battle as well. You know, you want to respect the culture that you've come from, Mm -hmm. but also still express the culture that you live in. And that sometimes those two things may be polar opposites from one another. Yeah. And then, you know, as we find out later, mama was running Mm -hmm. from for a very good reason. Exactly. So she I'm sure she wanted to leave everything connected to that. Mm -hmm. Even her uh, culture. Yeah where it was but she was self-made she's mm-hmm. a true self-made yeah. woman so i i was a, appreciative of that once yeah. we get into the story that it wasn't this very one-sided version of mm-hmm. this like everybody in their own right is successful yeah yeah absolutely because mom was a nurse realtor oh, realtor mm-hmm. realtor i don't know where i got a nurse from <laughs> uh okay so of course we go to singapore we're on the way and this is where rachel first learns that nick has some money Mm-hmm. but she hasn't quite learned the extent of the money he has, but she learned he got a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and she just took it real well. Right? Yeah. Cause it was huh, okay. Normal rich. Mm-hmm. 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 I was like, wow, she didn't, you know, now what typically would have been a plot would have been, Oh my God, how could you lie to me? And I'm right. Like, oh. So yep. I Rachel. will say she took this very well. <laughs> Rachel was like, that's y'all. <laughs> I'm more worried about his mama going to like me in normal Mm -hmm. terms, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And of course they arrive and we meet all of the family. It was funny when they walked through the airport. I mean the friends, Mm -hmm. meet the friends initially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was funny that when she walked through the airport, she was like, it's a butterfly garden in here in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I have heard great things about that airport. I low key want to travel to Singapore just to see the airport. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the friends name are Arminta and um, Colin. And I love that they were just like so down to earth and so mm-hmm. welcoming yeah. because yeah. you assume by the little pieces that we're getting that the whole circle is, is going to be wealthy, you know, because when he did the breakdown on the plane about who she should be prepared for, who the cousins are that he was close to, he only said he was close to one of his cousins, which mm-hmm. is Astrid. And we will see why later. Mm-hmm. But I was happy to see like regular down to earth people, regardless of uh, financial status. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, so well, I did like that they were, you know, introducing her to like the yes, culture. I uh, like that too. You know, immersing her in what it, you know, this is yes. what you would really get, you know, not when we go to the posh, you know, heavily done up stuff. Like yeah. if you want to get the experience, this is it. We're going to eat street food. We're going to have mm-hmm. beer. We're yes. going to be out here laughing. Yeah. You yeah. know, and they he gave her or they all three of them gave her a very yes. soft mm-hmm. intro into Singaporean yeah. uh, culture. And for all the interns that don't know, Singapore is one of the only places in the entire world who has um, food stalls that have Michelin stars. Mm-hmm. And like they have like their food is delicious. I, I ain't never ate it, but I watch a lot of people who mm-hmm. go okay. to them and they review them. Mm-hmm. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, definitely like YouTube that. One of the people that I follow that does that is like Mikey Chin, um, all of that. But I was like, yes. Well, and it was authentic. Said, yeah, even Nick said that they have like good street food, mm-hmm. you know? Girl, I was like, dang. Mm-hmm. Where am I It was at looking good when this too. was being filmed. Mm-hmm. I was, it was looking <laughs> good because sometimes I'd be like, mm-hmm. that's not the type of food I think i would be partaking in Mm -hmm. but this stuff did look good at least in this particular scene yeah 
Um, there was another part where I was thinking, um, as they're kind of riding in the Jeep or whatnot, mm-hmm. and several other times throughout this film, uh, I was like, they're very loud. Uh, the, it's the generation. Yeah, because I was like, that's not a very typical behavior in Asian culture uh, to be very loud, to be very boisterous, you know, screaming and ah. But I wonder if it, if that's how they are with each other. That's exactly what I think it is. I grew up in an area that had a military base with a lot of like refugee families and things like that. And one of the major Asian populations that we had was Cambodian mm-hmm. and how they present themselves to the world is very different than if you're on the inner circle. Yeah. Like they are very loud, happy, jovial people and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I've seen like that, a that difference. Economy. So that's what I, I think we got to see like a, a firsthand experience of how they would be with their folks. Mm. Which that makes sense. I was going to say it makes sense if he was staying true to the culture. Yeah. yeah. Cause then when we see the glimpse of Astra, we see how she mm-hmm. is in the public. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause baby, Ooh, po- she baby. is poised. Po- it's the escapism for me. <laughs> That part. Mm. Yes. My heart breaks for her. Yeah. Like the amount of, I was thinking, yeah, binding. Yeah. That she has to do Mm -hmm. emotionally. And I imagine the mental gymnastics she's had to jump through. Yeah. When you get lost in the role that you play, you can tell she's the good kid. Mm -hmm. You can tell that she is the one that does the right thing always. Yeah. And sometimes you sacrifice yourself and not to get too psychological like your inner child is screaming please help me it's it's the it's those ones that need to actually leave Mm -hmm. um and so that they can get to know themselves like nick left and went to new york and yeah he got to know himself Mm -hmm. she should have left so that she could know herself and come out of her shell Mm -hmm. so that you know, and it's not that she was just going to go, oh, wow. I mean, maybe she would have for about a year or so. But, you <laughs> know, but Nick seemed to still have the the respect for his culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those two cousins, I think they would have been fine. Yeah. Their mothers. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, it made me wonder about her thought process in marrying a man that was below her means. Mm-hmm. If she sought him purely for love. Or if it was for rebellion and then it became love, or if it was um, he provided her with a sense of comfort that she was not able to have in her, you know, the way her family kind of runs themselves. I think based off of what we saw, she truly loved him. I don't think he probably was accepted fully by the family, probably because Mm -hmm. he was not of their their class, as they say. But I think he probably got wrapped up in what other people thought about him versus what his wife thought about him. Oh, clearly, you know, yeah. I, clearly the way I want to knock this joke out. Mm-hmm. Cause he ain't have to do her like that. Cause I'm, but I knew it. I knew it. It's when he, when I saw him in that show, I said, Mm-mm. he watching something off. Mm-hmm. We didn't jump to hear y'all. Oh, right. sorry. Yeah. It's okay. We told y'all. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be, be jumping around. Yeah. We told y'all get, just get used to it. Uh, but, you know, she had to hide herself. Like, you know, she couldn't even really be present, truly, even in her marriage, as herself. No, she yeah. couldn't. You know, she had to hide her like purchases, the, mm-hmm. you know. And my thing was, I was thinking, sir, you knew this woman had money when you married her. Right. Like, this ain't like she, it's different if y'all came up together, y'all both kind of got it out the mud, and somehow she became more successful. Mm-hmm. I think that's a different mindset. Then you went in already knowing this woman was well beyond wealthy. But I think that goes to what she told him at the end when she was deciding to leave him. Like, I'm done, like, hiding who I am or dumbing down myself, basically, um, just to make you feel like a man. I shouldn't have to make you feel like a man if you are already a man. Mm -hmm. Astrid and Michael are a prime example of when your spouse becomes competitive with you Mm -hmm. and then stops sharing what they are experiencing so that y'all can work through it Mm -hmm. you you if we're gonna be together we need to be together yeah and it's not my job to rescue you but i can't be supportive 
Right. Mm -hmm. And I and I shouldn't have to hide the fact that because if I have money, then we both have money. So right. I shouldn't have to hide the fact that we can afford to buy million dollar earrings. <laughs> Which was why I was wondering about, you know, I, of course, we're not going to get this backstory about her reasoning for marrying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, based off of the books, uh, she was genuine. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It's just more so how the outside world, outside of them world, mm -hmm. uh, viewed him and then how he internalized that and projected it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a consistent theme across a lot of cultures about the idea of what is a man and what is considered to be manly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is tied to finances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. that is not the only way to provide. Right. It's not. Um obviously but he but of course for most many cultures that is the thing and he was obviously he was not listening to what she was telling him because mm -hmm. obviously i don't need to make a big deal out of you not having money i have it so because i'm supposed to be self-sufficient it's two whole people coming together right. not these pieces yeah right. even though we all got our issues mm -hmm. but you still are supposed to be complete people and what y'all decide to do in the marriage is what y'all decide to do in the marriage exactly yeah. mm. that hurt my heart mm -hmm. you could see the writing on the wall yeah but he it was is. fine though michael was fine <sighs> but it is what it is mm -hmm. so of course we kind of get back to the couple and nick you know tries to prepare rachel for meeting his family mm -hmm. And she's wearing the red dress and everything that her and her mama picked out. And I was like, oh, you can tell. They did a good job of making her, her look like a regular, a regular degla girl. Said, <laughs> this is like when, that dress came from Ross. When your <laughs> people come from uh, the city and you dating somebody from the country. I said, she just walked up in there looking like a whole country bumpkin. She did. In she the middle did. of the jungle. She did. She did. I said, I said oh. oh. Help I said, girl, I know exactly where you got that dress from. Okay. It came off Amazon or <laughs> came out of Ross or TJ Maxx or something. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't no Nordstrom's or, or Saks Fifth. No, <laughs> not at all. Mm -hmm. But she she hooks up with a friend. Um, Picklin. Picklin, thank you. Because I was about to say Peking again. Girl, <laughs> I, I have like five different things written in here. Um, but she meets with the, her family and this family is... <laughs> Like hilarious. wild, yes. wild. They obviously got money too. That spooky little brother, whatever he was, creep. <laughs> he was factor. A, yes, voyeur, he for was real. Spooky. To what's, me. what's your sex sex therapist assessment? Because that seemed like some true voyeurism. Well, I think part of it, he probably has some social anxiety, mm -hmm. of course. Um, but he probably is a little bit more voyeuristic, and because he is, uh the younger brother he can probably get away with some things mm -hmm. and which you know he becomes way more playful throughout the movie he's yeah. still voyeuristic doing the most but it doesn't cross anymore yeah <laughs> boundaries and like, I was like i'm like sir i need you to put that phone down because when he makes that comment and she said how long have you been there he's mm. like only a sweet little while i said oh mm -hmm. what in the jeffrey Dahmer is happening <laughs> yes <laughs> too much I was yeah. like, oh, that's too much sauce. Yeah. Um, this is also where Rachel learns the extent yes. to how famous mm -hmm. and how deeply rooted in Singapore culture the young family is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And think about it in comparison to the people telling her, because these people are rich. Yes. Right. Like Wealthy she went and rich. got a purse and showed her the map. Like this, this is it right here. <laughs> this is what we got going on with him. <laughs> Yeah. like she's like basically they created singapore right i mean for all intents and purposes mm -hmm. yeah they just came here and said oh we like that 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 that's gonna, gonna make that land. something <laughs> yeah 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 i on that note i did enjoy even though it this is a movie about chinese um expats chinese american uh Chinese Singaporeans technically mm -hmm. we also got to see little pieces of the Singaporean culture as well you have to kind of pay attention to the background like I always be doing mm -hmm. but I do I did enjoy us getting to see that unfortunately the majority of it that we see is the servants mm -hmm. of the young family or the we'll, we'll call them the youngs the young family but I did enjoy being able to see certain parts of that while we were watching this movie mm -hmm. yeah uh, so 
you know, they help old girl uh, get her life, get her life together. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah no you are not wearing that because you about to go meet the mama and no and the granny and that's the, the granny that's, that's a big part right so that's remember the voice we, oh go ahead thank you <laughs> thank you because i was like we've said this before somebody's voice is the loudest whose is that and that is the matriarch mm -hmm. they are there is no patriarch in their family mm. um he is since gone on to glory so we just got we just got granny Mm -hmm. mama son yeah know. and and eleanor's husband is away on business i mean we don't even see him at all in the movie right no so he's just out there making money yeah that's it yeah he don't do nothing else but making make sure money. the bank account stay fat <laughs> oh the, the pressure mm -hmm. oh i can't imagine what kind of um, <laughs> stress uh induced physical symptoms they have mm -hmm. a lot to maintain that type of money you know we've talked about old money before that you know it's status and it usually doesn't stay after so many generations because the 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 longer you have money, the younger generation doesn't respect it the same way that the ones that created it do. Mm -hmm. So we we pass that. So they right. maintain in there so that you imagine mm -hmm. yeah. because they had wealth be when they left. Mm -hmm. So that was already generations. Mm hmm past mm -hmm. oh, man we into the seventh eighth generation more even, than likely i yeah. can't even imagine that yeah i know <sighs> that mean that mean they had a, a lot of money girl and i wouldn't even know what to do i'd be like it's I a whole I'm lot of money in this <laughs> be a be okay i'm sorry I'm sorry no dancing that's exactly what i was thinking <laughs> i was like man they just throwing yeah. it out there but anyway we digressed hard um but of course rachel you know meets mom and this is when you get the first kind of like monster in law feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what I will say, foreign mother in laws with the firstborn son, it, I don't know how every culture outside of the Americas has perfected this, <laughs> but if you have never dated, someone that is like steeped in their culture still it's a whole other level mm. like mm -hmm. whether it's an african family whether it's asian family whatever mexican family hispanic family it is it's a whole other level we think ours be rough over here in the states that well, a lot of other cultures outside of the u.s are much more blunt Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, um, no sugar. Um, yeah, we do a lot <laughs> of back behind, you know, backbiting, talking behind. So the mama will say something to the son when you go. Mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm. no, I don't like her. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Versus like how Eleanor did when she said that, you know, parents are obsessed with shaping the lives of their children. And she was letting you know right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, and you right, might, you it. might got him on some fun stuff but she was trying to let her know but i really run this yeah mm -hmm. rachel was like your mama didn't like me but i could i did respect the fact that nick um had some boundaries with his mom because he did mm -hmm. say no i have to figure out what my own life is gonna be like mm -hmm. yeah but he didn't have enough he needed a little bit more boundaries little but i think it's because he had never witnessed that he did say that this was the first girl he brought home versus mm -hmm. someone he grew up with. Mm -hmm. So I can understand the why, but he did need to. Well, and I think he still was trying to be respectful um, right. to his mother. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, like you said, it's, this is probably first the first time he's had to implement that type mm -hmm. of boundary with her. Yeah. And he hadn't been home either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so weird, you know, because mom seems excited, mm -hmm. but like not yeah. excited at the same time. Mm -hmm. like oh God. she was very dismissive mm -hmm. very very and i was thinking about uh rachel and how troublesome i can imagine it is being an outsider mm -hmm. you know you're already an outsider because you're not part of the family but you're even further of an outsider because you don't understand how it is to move in this type of world no because it's very nuanced and yes. she and it, she don't know how to move in this type of world on multiple levels <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. She don't know how to move with wealth. She don't even know about the culture that mm -hmm. much. Like it's, she, she don't know. The, the She's maid, a nerd. Grandma. Yeah, right. Or was it? Nanny. 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 Okay. I couldn't remember who they said it was. I was like, oh, Lord, girl. Mm -hmm. So she had multiple uh, 
darts at her because mm-hmm. she didn't know about and a lot everybody of everybody watching her and yeah. laughing at her right. you know what i mean right. like y'all nosy move mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> man y'all ain't even in a family hard yeah. hard uh, we also learn you know mom's trying you know after she does a wine spill all over them and mm-hmm. everything which i was like how did you i don't understand because it how- looked like you just threw it on them. yeah i didn't understand how she it was kind of like was nervous with her character i could see her doing something like that because she's very like all over the place with her anxious energy so it I was reminded like, Rachel, me of um and what men want when what's her name hit her head on the thing i was like how did that happen <laughs> how did you it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the most natural, like I spilled wine on your shirt, but yeah. it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is when we learn, you know, where mom really starts laying out the the line about the distinction between, you know, being Chinese, being Chinese American, and, you know, some of the expectations that are there for Nick. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the expectation is you going to come take over the family business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because your daddy is tired. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can tell that they still a unit, him, uh, her, and his daddy. But she was like, "I, I need my husband come sit down." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it would make sense if he was slated to take over the family business. That, uh, based off the and age, he seems mm-hmm. that this would be around the time that you know your father would be ready to retire mm-hmm. and you know get on the golf course and do his thug thizzle, travel and, freely. Right. And not be worried about it. And like, I can pass the baton off to my son. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he ain't really trying to hear that. (laughs) And so I can understand why, you know, mom. Well, she just didn't like Rachel either, but I can understand why a part of why she don't, because she feels like Nick is not going to come come back because of her. Mm -hmm. Um, But the thing is, she didn't give Rachel a chance to maybe Rachel was willing to move to singapore yeah you know? she didn't give either of them a chance right you know? she just made an assumption um out of her own fear mm-hmm. of her know, own life <laughs> as we later learn because gma mm. she a piece of work too boy right. is she but of course now rachel meets gma and <laughs> she loved her she did but one mm-hmm. thing i was like why do you know black you know, BIPOC families always comment on weight. You, you're getting skin. You know, if I my, was like, if my great granny come, was here, shout out to uh to Mama Inez. Um, <laughs> let me come here and fix you a sandwich. Mm. You can't go to Tennessee and have Tennessee relatives and not get cooked nut. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you some of this uh sausage gravy. You gonna make me? Some sausage from scratch? Is it in the refrigerator? No, I'm, a, I'm just going to whip it up right fast. Mm-mm. I was like, can we not do that? Calling people skinny and stuff? And she was like, but she was serious though. So she said she, she likes my face. Yeah, so but grandma no, uh, was auspicious. Nose. I know. I was like, auspicious? That's who? Look, <laughs> I was like, look, now that word sounds negative. But it's good. <laughs> it's good, but mm-hmm. it sounds real negative. And mama was not happy about that. She was like, to get oh. the seal of approval from Granny. Right. She likes her, mm-hmm. but you could see Mom over there plotting the whole time. You could see her just like, Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. but Granny came and got her though because she talked about them dumplings. She sure did. <laughs> I thought how bad she was making them. She, <laughs> she was like, "Oh, you still you losing it, huh?" <laughs> and see that, <laughs> and we're gonna get into that later. But that it was a good glimpse into mm-hmm. who she's becoming. The mom, she's perpetuating Eleanor. the cycle. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And you like, are your oh. you are your mother in law. Mm-hmm. Not and even your own mama. Your mother in law. Right. Right. And I'm thinking you didn't. You would then take the same thing. But some people like you know if I had to go through it then you had you got to go through it too. You know they yeah. had that whole idea if I had to struggle you got to struggle. I don't believe in rites of passages in that way. <laughs> uh. No. Well, I don't one, need to learn your lessons. Right. No. Not at all. But now we get into like the the party times and we got the bachelorette party and it seems like it's going well at first, right? Girl, the shade. But, and this is so extravagant. Yes. Like it was a hard left. Like as soon as y'all got to y'all's destination. This oh, you talking about the, the, the way they were treating them or, or the wealth? 
the way they were treating Rachel. Okay, I was talking about the extra, uh, the money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It For was, both of these. Oh, both of them were well over the top when it came to extravagance. Shopping sprees, spas. Mm-hmm. He done rented a whole oil tanker look type deal. Whole barge. You having a party. First of all, I need to be able to get off this boat. Easily. <sighs> Not part. because I know how to mm-hmm. fly a plane, but because I just need to be able to get off the boat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was out of control and i 100 percent agree with you it took a hard left turn at least on the ladies no, end. On the la- yeah on yeah, the bachelorette the, it, it was it was too much on the boys end from the moment he came out with his shirt open mm-hmm. <laughs> talking about this is for you no sir this is about you, you. it you. sure is because he didn't even seem like he wanted all of that no he, he wanted didn't. to chill right because you see him and nick later on they just on like the little floating yes thing, gazebo thing and they just having a little drinky drink mm-hmm. yep chilling drinking beers that's all he wanted he's like yep. i just want i'm trying to get married gently it's <laughs> because one uh i think he even said to nick he was like I, we got to get off this boat yeah he did and nick flew him off Oh, did he? Nick was the okay. pilot. Yeah, because they had the, the helicopter sitting on him. I, I, I said, I was you wondering, I was, yes. Where you get the, it was on the, the rock. thing? <laughs> it's, it's so many. <laughs> this level of wealth, I can't fathom. I'm watching it. Yes. But I, I'm just, huh? Yeah. Right? yeah I, was, I, I forgot about the, uh, the little jet. Yes, it was on the rock. Mm-hmm. I, was sure like, was. I said, that. I said, oh, they got that thing perched up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, if we do this, we, we got to make sure we get my cousin um, Takara because she got a, a pilot's license. Mm-hmm. Takara, we need you to come with us because we all know. Yeah. We ain't going to too many off. buttons. Yes. <laughs> but the ladies, though. Oh. So this chick, Amanda, which I was like, oh, at first it was like, oh, okay. So she got her little friend. Yeah, she got somebody uh, to hang out with. And then, you know when I knew it was bad? When she fake fell in the the golf cart. I said she fake. (laughs) (laughs) She fake. (laughs) I don't like it. (laughs) Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was like, that was so unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And... I was like, so now y'all plotting against this girl. Right. And she's such a sweet person. She ain't done nothing to you. It didn't work out between you and Nick. He don't like you. But I, because I, I wonder, I was like, does the uh, bride know that this is going on? No, she like, did couldn't know. I mean, she couldn't know. But remember, they brought that up about how growing up together and you just overlook mm-hmm. how people, and I can attest to having been friends with somebody, you love them for so long, and then you just overlook some of their bad qualities till you finally have to be like, I'll chop you in your neck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-mm. yeah. And then they put the fish girl. The dead oh, that fish. was so, I was like, so disrespectful. I said, and, wasn't that like a barracuda or something? Like, it was a fish fish. Yeah, it was a yeah. big one. And because uh, I was just like, wait a minute. What kind of what kind of dislike do you have towards someone that you're going to kill a fish, put it in somebody's bed, and write with the blood on, on the little thing? It's, like, what kind and of you know hatred? they hired a servant to do that. You know. But, I'm, <laughs> but why? Like, this girl ain't did nothing to you. And that was the thing. That like, was, it was coordinated. This is probably yeah. the one part of the movie that, again, this is a very st- stock kind of film, but this was probably the one thing that I thought did not fit in the movie. I think because we, based off of the book, they're having to shorten everything because it's mm. a lot of meat and potatoes in the book, you know, like normal because mm-hmm. Jurassic Park is totally different mm. than gotcha. the book and all that. But, um, they had been slowly antagonizing her. Like if you remember the scene right before that, when she was breaking her down on the uh, massage table, like emotionally Mm -hmm. and verbally breaking her down. And then Mm -hmm. she got on her phone and text and And said, she's on her way. I'm like, it's a whole operation. Like y'all, this is the level of rich Asian mean girls. Mm -hmm. And y'all already know that's an issue for me. I hate mean girls Mm -hmm. with a passion. Yeah. 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 It just felt off. Mm-hmm. It just felt excessive, you know. For I, no I, reason. Yeah, I get the mean girls. Not that I agree with it, but yeah. I get the mean girls and the cattiness. But I was like, this is a this a whole nother level. A, yeah, y'all but, done took it to like some on Sopranos level. But think about it: Are you gonna sleep with the fishes? Why would they ever know limitations in that level of wealth? True. Yeah. You know, the, the it's not gonna be fathomable to us, and it shouldn't be because we're healthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> when it start, it, when you start understanding, it, it's like, oh, okay, you need and to go you have call a the girl state. a gold digger, right? And she don't, and she, she don't even know the man him. had money. Yeah, and still loved him. True, because mm-hmm. he using her Netflix account. 
Exactly. That's love. Right. Like going to play basketball at the Y. Because mm. he likes to 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 be amongst the common people. <laughs> <laughs> we later. Find I got a family. Right. I got to feel regular. <laughs> right. Uh, we also learned here. Well, we had already previously gotten a glimpse into, but here is also where Astrid kind of says it out loud uh, that she knows her husband is having an affair. Uh, yeah, because she she saw a text message. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and you can see the beginnings of some sisterhood growing mm-hmm. uh, with them. And I like that they just, it's certain people in this film that I love because they always embraced Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. his friend, his two friends in the beginning, uh, Astrid. Astrid, they, I, obviously they've had some sort of correspondence over the years because mm-hmm. they immediately like hugged each other when they saw each other at the party. Mm-hmm. And then grabbing each other and being like, hey, what's wrong with you? Like some I was right. glad she was there. Yeah. Uh, cause ain't no telling what she would have been by herself, mm-hmm. which is her norm, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, we also get a small little moment where Rachel and Nick are talking about what happened at the beach. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is again, stuff didn't seem to fit for me because it almost was like she glossed over it. Like it, there wasn't, it didn't seem like a, to me. Now, this is just my own personal idea. The conversation didn't seem like it had enough intensity or emotion, emotional, emotionness to it or whatever word I'm making up there. Uh, Because she was like, yeah, this happened. And the girls were really mean. And I think it was just like, okay, I trust you. All right. Well, how I looked at it is I took into to play what she's built on, you know, Being the child of a single mother who had to essentially get it out the mud, being a New Yorker, Mm -hmm. which is a whole other level of living, you know, just they are a more in your face. You coming to get me, I'm going to come get you. I think she's very emotionally intelligent. So we're looking at somebody who probably has already processed her stuff. Mm. And now she's having this conversation with him. And I think all she needed was him to acknowledge it. She she's not one of those stereotypical female characters that needs to be saved. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think if this would have been that type of movie, then we would have saw so much more coddling, so much more mm-hmm. that other stuff. Well, I also think um, she's an outsider. So, and not that Nick wouldn't believe her, but still not trying to rattle the fence either. Because obviously if she would have made more of a, a bigger deal of it, he may have tried to rescue her, which like Dr. Wall said, she didn't necessarily want to be rescued. Mm-hmm. She just needs needed you to hear her out and yeah. without rattling the, you know, the cage. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, well, you know, this next few little scenes here, we, you know, get a little bit more of a glimpse into the dynamic between the grandma and the mom and um, Nick's mom, Eleanor talking to Rachel about, you know, you don't, you're not worth my son's time, basically. Mm. Like, you never going to be it. You not it. You you never going to be it. So you might as well go ahead and just move on around. Uh, but Grandma, dude, she's still liking her. She's like, I like this girl. What you talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, and then Mom is trying to tell her, like, how hard it is to make it in a family like this. Like, you got to be willing to sacrifice some things. Um, and you know, she's trying to tell her that you don't have what it takes. You know, I, I hate the fact that Eleanor, which is mom, would just completely glossed over Rachel's experience of family and being, and Rachel being open and mm-hmm. just stating how much she appreciated being able to be around them and see what a big family felt like because she didn't get to experience that. Mm-hmm. And then her commenting and complimenting her on her ring and her giving the story of like mm-hmm. how she got the ring and then you still like it's not clicking yeah like, for Eleanor. she was not reading the room like she that all of them <laughs> seem to have been have enjoying yes. this time mm-hmm. of bonding and Rachel getting to know the family and them getting to know Rachel mm-hmm. and and then mom just throws this monkey wrench out yeah cuz she in her feelings she is not i ain't gonna lie that ring is beautiful it let, was. let me That's put you back want. up there uh, i want my uh you know how they say like every anniversary is like a certain gift or whatnot. Mm-hmm. I want my uh, upgrade ring to the be twentieth. Yeah, that was next. 
Yes. Uh, as far as milestone is concerned. Yeah. Uh, yes. I want my upgrade ring to be a, um, uh, Dr. Strickland husband. Y'all, you make sure you listening. Let us know. I've if said we need this to come, several times. Come with you and help you pick uh, out the right one. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I text you. Uh, six months. No, no, no. A year before the twenty, you <laughs> might need to you might need to do two because <laughs> that ring be. I know it okay. is. Okay. Uh, but I want a now there isn't. I want emerald color, but there's a different gemstone that is a little bit tougher than emerald. Mm-hmm. But I can't. Yeah. And the thought of I can't. I, the name is escaping me right now. So now, like, now, friend, you got to send me a picture so I know what to send. Oh, me. I already got it in my. I got it in my well, phone you, already. Well, send I sent it, it to, to me. Okay, this, y'all. This gonna be the one time she be overly girly. This gonna be the one time. Yes, it got the emerald. It got diamond on it, and it's got the white gold. <laughs> That's what I want my upgrade ring to be. Because I was like, I don't want that either. That or I want a um. There is a sapphire. I mean, excuse me, a ruby, but it's a like a orange, light orangish color ruby. Mm-hmm. Since I didn't realize that rubies can come in all colors, mm-hmm. all colors. Because my birthstone is a ruby, just, just like a a sapphire. You can yeah. come in all these colors. Um, so I, it's like a light orange one. So I'm here for because I don't yeah. want a diamond either. Yeah, I think I'm over that. Um, well, you've been married for a long time. You don't wear your diamond. I have. <laughs> I have. Cause I just got a regular Douglas band now, but I, you know, when I'm ready to wear like a ring ring, I want to go back to that. Mm-hmm. But you know, we we don't got off, so y'all know now y'all hear it. So Talk any of the, the interns then... that know my husband, let them know. Uh, <laughs> so Rodney, okay, <laughs> Invisible Man. <laughs> so when he go back and listen, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, this whole little scene here, you get like mom's real mo. That's yeah. the whole point. You got mom's MO she and she's mm-hmm, she trying to put it out there that she ain't with the the BS. Right. The level of mushing that I wanted Rachel to do, but then that would have been a different movie. Mm-hmm. And then she just quietly just wrapped it up. Well, come on back because we don't want Nick to be wondering where we are. Ma'am, I was trying to go to the bathroom. I, Why are you stalking me? Because you came out your way. You came for me. You left the table. And probably said something real sweet to Nick. I'm going to go make sure she's okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know she did. mm -hmm. But, you know, this is when Rachel's like, oh, hold on. You trying to be funny. Okay, I got you. You trying, you want war. You trying to fight. Like, Mm. we, are we battling for the man? Are you, your man is my man. (laughs) That's her man too. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) On the weekend. Right. Okay. Because that, you know, it's giving, you know, vibes here. But you see where she went. She went to Pickland mm-hmm. to make sure, okay, whatever. And why was Pickland talking about, yeah, they think you a banana. I said, <laughs> oh, they have a phrase too. They do. Because we have Oreo. Mm-hmm. And they, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm learning so much in this movie. Mm-hmm. And she was like, bop, bop. <laughs> I was like, Aquafina, I need you to not do this in all your movies. Yes. But I appreciated that she went to the friend that was going to get her back to mm-hmm. how she deals with things and mm-hmm. not just like succumb yeah. to the craziness. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Then we get a little clothing montage, you know, white girl, white chicks-esque clothing <laughs> montage. Yeah. Um, and she finally finds the dress that she's going to wear to the wedding. Yes. You know. And it's very expensive. It is very expensive. <laughs> and, you know, when she does get to the wedding, she show up Amanda and all that jazz. She said. Right in her face. Peep it, girl. Ooh. And she was like, move. Oh, I was like, yes, New Yorker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm like, <gasps> what? <laughs> but, uh, Yes. We also get a little bit of a uh, moment in the car on the way to the wedding where Astrid and uh, Michael finally separate because he is trying to cancel their son's <laughs> birthday. He don't want to be a Like, how you don't want to go to your own son's Cause birthday? Because he got to go do got business. To be with my no, girl. He got to, right. That's what he got to do. Yeah. He's like, well, you should be more upset. It hurts me more that you're not. Sir, stop playing games with me. And stop I'm, playing games with me. When she rolled up that partition. Drive around with the partition, please. <laughs> uh, no, I was like, say. "Ooh, it's it's done now." That's that's yeah. We got to have a serious conversation. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And then she put him out. I'm assuming uh, she put him mm-hmm. out the car. And then what, I guess what I didn't understand about him 
is that he want like you were so starved for what you said you was not getting, which was her attention, that you wanted her to scream at you and be mad at the fact that you was having because an affair. Because he needs to deal with his stuff. Exactly. This is how children handle issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That insecurity mm -hmm. yeah. was on 10. Yeah. The most. Just rejection mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, she ain't even rejecting you. That woman really loved you. She really did. So we get to the wedding, of course, as Rachel's getting all the attention and they trying to talk the mama. And all, I'm assuming these are her friends, her cousin. I don't know. Those are the aunties. Aunties. Mm -hmm. They're all related. Okay. Uh, the mama and the aunties are trying to be like, oh, no, no you can't sit with us, honey. You can't. Mm -mm, no. But, but one came along. One's coming. And then, on her mm -hmm. side. yeah, the little short one was like, it's, it's, I like your dress, girl. Mm -hmm. um, but. Rachel's like, oh, no, 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 I got some for that ass. Mm -hmm. She's like, let me do my pep talk. Let I'm me get, get to the together. princess. Because the princess said, I want my that own part. row. Right. I and she needed one because she is royalty. Hmm. But I do like that Rachel, she wasn't reading that now cue. But I do like that she literally talked to her from her, mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. expertise. And I was yeah. like, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she didn't just go in and compliment her dress or whatever no. mm -hmm. she actually had something of substance to say to this woman mm -hmm. yes uh, very much so. had, and i like the fact that they were able to uh talk about it laugh and joke and the mm -hmm. princess didn't seem annoyed no, no she didn't mm -hmm. she kind of had knew. that like uh-huh but was, then it was like oh it was like, hold on you, you really know who i am yes, oh you exactly. really know who yeah, i yes. am okay not just like you know the princess oh no you know me mm-hmm Girl, mm -hmm. she like, yeah, girl. Mm -hmm. It was so funny. Um, and then we get the wedding. Oh, it was beautiful. We'll do Asher's part first. Oh, when she walk in with grandma. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because they were surprised when G Ma walked in. They was like, hold on, she, she don't, don't never come to weddings. Keeping up appearances. Because mm -hmm. they would have said something. Had Asher come come by herself. Where's your husband at? Um, but I also feel like it's playing into that escaping and not showing up your authentic self and not mm -hmm. being able to have a moment of just a real moment which but is I, what her husband's complaint about her was yeah. however he should have communicated that yeah true but i am appreciative that grandma was there even though it was it was wrapped in some toxicity because she's i can't remember the exact comment but she said we don't something to the fact we don't let people see something mm -hmm. and i was mm -hmm. like oh granny yeah. yeah stop it yeah. But I can get, I get it though, you know, yeah. that this isn't the time or the place for you to be able to show yourself mm -hmm. authentically. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to kind of hold it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we get the young couple and she walks down the aisle and baby, that water started flowing oh, through there. That was so and she beautiful. stuck that foot out there and like everything so started going in dancer. slow mm -hmm. motion. That slow she said, that slow motion. I love And then the little bouncy like fairy the, yeah, fireflies girl. and things. When I get married, the level I'm trying to do something similar to not forty million dollars, because I that's not appropriate. But that that mm -hmm. walk down the aisle was like That was beautiful. It was. I was like, that is probably my that <laughs> And the twilight. Oh Lord, <laughs> it's probably one of my two and uh, Whitley and um, oh, that's my favorite. I just one. saw right. Dwayne. That the I did it on uh, the shade room. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I saw Baby, that. Too. Please, that's my favorite please. right there. Yeah, them, them, my, them, my top threes right there. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's so beautiful. And when they stopped and you could see everything like just bouncing in, in the in the background, mm -hmm. it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was really and beautiful. It, it her was dress like a, was beautiful oh, on her, yeah. everything. It was like an ode to where they all came from. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like I mean, I had to figure out where I came from first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was gorgeous. <laughs> So then we get the reception. Mm -hmm. It's some craziness going on at the reception. Like that, that, what was we doing? What kind of dancing was we doing? 40s. 40s 50s you know that no 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 no. i'm talking, talking about, about the, the cousin kitty or, yeah was that yeah. her name the, the, with the yellow one the with kitty. the ponytail the movie, the movie that was star. kitty <laughs> yeah it was a lot she's not related mama said get that uh-huh handle that <laughs> handle that <laughs> then this is when all hell break loose yes so mama's like uh can we talk to y'all real quick uh g ma want to meet y'all and then g ma's like look i like you but you're not gonna fit in my family because and then insert mama done had the pi searcher and tells all this stuff that rachel obviously had no, no idea idea so like you would have no remorse no care or concern about your son's feelings about mm. this young woman's feelings because you assume she was lying 
and she wasn't because she didn't know she didn't know this that's her mama's story and if her mama chose to tell her that story then okay but if she chose not to then that's her mama's story and you assumed that she knew the story like it was her own story yeah yeah this is putting your needs before somebody else Mm -hmm. your own desires before somebody else's and these would be the types of reasons why your children would question on whether you really care for them yeah this is the kind of reasons why kids leave home and don't come back Mm -hmm. Because you have put yourself, you have manipulated the situation to make yourself look good or think you're making yourself look yeah. good. Or make yourself be right. That too. What way is she playing the game? She's trying not to lose. Right. Yeah. That she ain't true. trying to win. Right. Because yeah. she would have technically lost everything. Yes. Like you about to lose your son like so much Mm -hmm. and then you further gonna now drive a wedge with the grandma because she like look this your fault look where he going literally what Mm -hmm. she said this is your fault so now you done got a bigger wedge with the grandma i mean it was just a lot going on Mm -hmm. and of course she goes into a a a small little kind of depressive episode which makes sense because you know you kind of realize like my whole identity my world with my partner like all of this has just been shattered and it's like like, this story that they making up about my mama is not even true because she still don't know yet that no, it's right. actually true. And, but it's not true. Not fully. The not way, fully. You know what I'm way, saying? Yeah, like like the way they it. got. Yeah. No, that's not actually what happened. Yeah. Um. So, you know, Nick does a very sweet thing and gets her mother, you know, flies her mother to that was so nice. Singapore. He's such a sweet boy. Yeah, he understood what <laughs> yeah. she, that she needed, she needed her. She was yeah. there by herself. I mean, yeah, she had her friend, but she needed her mama. Yeah, they mm-hmm. even like even your mama crazy now. family tried to help. They did. They The little twins, and it was like, yeah, Rachel. <laughs> she got some real food, not fast food. That uh-huh. time. Um, but it ain't, you know, for people that have a healthy relationship with their mother, it ain't nothing like your mother. Mm-hmm. No, it, she, I mean, oh, the way she even as an adult. Her, yeah. I was like, I know that feeling. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. said that to my husband probably about two months ago. He was like, you stressed out. Yeah. He's like, you need some mother time. I, I said, yeah, I said it's legit. <laughs> I was like, I legit really just want my mama to hold me like a baby. Mm-hmm. I really just wish she could just pick me up in her arms mm-hmm. and just pat feelings. me on my back like a baby. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, it's, that's just not possible as an adult. But I was like, but that, that's what I'm feeling inside. That's we what can, I want right now. You can sit on the couch and she can do it. And, uh, well, you know what? Look. The thing about it is like, I, I can't, t- I mean, I can't tell my mama that, but I can't tell my, cause my mom, I, I'm getting ready to go to Texas. Okay. I, you ain't got to stay, you, you ain't got to take me. I will walk. I'm okay. getting to Texas. I think all our moms are like that. Don't, don't. Mm-hmm. I know. Cause now that I've said that when she watches it, she going to be like, come to the house, Shonda. She gonna be like, uh, so we on our way over there. I mm-hmm. just wanted to let yeah. you know that we'll be there in about 10, 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but of course he apologizes. Well, so we get a little bitty scene where mom goes to see, speak with Nick. And then of course, you know, this is the moment where they have their come to Jesus. They don't actually show it, but this is where you realize that mom recognizes that she was wrong. Mm-hmm. And like her son is like, look, I love this woman and I don't care what you say or what you do. You're not going to change that. Right. So you can either give your blessing or you can move on around. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she said, you know what? I love my son. So I'm just going to back off a little bit and I'm going I'm to move on around. Mm-hmm. And here, here, here's my, let me give you so much of a blessing that I will give you my ring. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so she gives him his ring. He tries to apologize to her. But of course, Rachel's kind of like, no, at first she's like, no, that that's okay. Um, and then the mama and Rachel meet to play a little mahjong. Mm-hmm. And mama was still going with the same strategy mm-hmm. again. Huh. Mm-hmm. She, she and she thought she won. She did. She thought it. And Rachel thought about it. There were several times oh, she, was like, she was about to tear that head up. She was mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, I could do this to her, but I don't know if I want to. Mm-hmm. But let me let me not do that." And you know, I, again, mom had to learn a hard lesson. You know, they say a hard head make a soft behind. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it wasn't enough that your son had to put you in your place, it seems like. Yeah. Then you turn around and you need it again. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. in the, you need to learn the lesson again. And when the mamas looked back and the mom was like, yeah, yeah, that's my daughter. Mm-hmm. You you going to learn mm-hmm. your, you going to learn today. <laughs> yeah, because she would have swept her. Well, I mean, she did sweep her. Yeah. Like you're playing opposite. I'm going to always beat you because I'm playing to win. 
And I understand what this would do to the person I love. And I'm willing to sacrifice what we have and turn down the offer. Because at the end of the day, when he happy with whoever this next person going to be, it's going to be because of me, not you. Mm-hmm. That's it. Check that me. Talk, like, the, right. I don't know what you do right. with my song, my even though I done played it, but in, in chess, it's checkmate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, when you talk about a gut punch, like the reality of that, that is true. Yeah. Your son's yeah. happiness will have been because of me, not because of you. And that's why she had to go eat that crow mm-hmm. with her son. Yeah. Yep. So then, of course, you know, we get Astrid. They they separate. And then ending of the movie. Um, so Astrid finally steps up and kind of puts her nice. Her her redemption is she put on the million dollar earrings mm-hmm. and walk off into the sunset. Mm-hmm. Get her life. Uh, and very, very end, of course, you know, we got to have the nice Jerry Maguire ending, ending you know. You had me a hello uh, where he get on the plane and he presents mama's ring because that's the only way that girl was going to marry him. Yeah, because if you present me with the ring that you bought me, I know I still don't have a blessing and I can't do that mm-hmm. in in my heart. But the fact that we got this ring and then from your, your mama, mama had to take it off her finger and give yep. it to you yeah. and give you permission to give it to me. There yes. we go. So, of course, she says yes. And I'm not sure if this was an engagement party. It was. Okay. If that, I was like, I'm like, is this yeah. a wedding engagement party? I couldn't tell. But so they have the engagement party at the end. And, you know, Mama kind of, they catch eyes, her and Rachel. And yeah. Mama slips off to the side. So you get the, like, visual confirmation that Mama understands that my role is now. I need to go sit down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm in the background. In, mm-hmm. Yeah. So. That's that. Yeah. Now, what I will say is I appreciate that Kevin Kwan, which is the author of the books and all that kind of stuff, he had a, a mid credit scene with Astrid. So it leaves you kind of hanging. And we know that Astrid is going to have um, a love interest come up in the mm. sequel. So mm-hmm. I do appreciate that. But I want to shout out Chris Payne, who is calling in the movie, if if you need a woman or something <laughs> like that. I'm available. Hey. He's beautiful. <laughs> there was a lot of uh sexy asians in this it, this film it was that's what it, crazy sexy rich asians there yeah. you go yeah. <laughs> title change right <laughs> okay so uh i didn't really see any huge mental health specific issues in here i saw a lot of family dynamic issues kind of like structural family yeah. issues and not boundary issues right but not necessarily any like diagnosed m- diagnoses yeah in the film i I would say that probably astrid had some slight depression um nothing mm-hmm. nothing that she's gonna need a pill for but i'll, right. I'll probably slight. say maybe adjustment disorder depressed mood yeah i can see that i would yeah. agree with y'all a little bit uh so how where little, would y'all <laughs> a little alcoholism oh because yes. that cousin yeah them two cousins i was like y'all need to get somewhere and sit down yes well just a little bit a little binge drinking uh so what i would rate this film um honestly uh i want to say like a three okay um it it, well i think it it just feels like a mid to me okay yeah i would i would say a I'm torn between 2.8 and 3.2. Okay, that's real specific. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh-huh. carry on. <laughs> I would say a 3.2 because I like the fact that they um, stuck to a lot of the traditions and mm-hmm. things of the Asian mm-hmm. culture. But 2.8 because it was very, um, uh, it, it was it was a Hallmark movie mm-hmm. to yeah. me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Overall. Yeah. Okay. How about you? So I'm going to give it a 4.5 okay. because I appreciate um, an authentic movie made by the group of people that it was for and to give us a glimpse into some of the things that they probably experienced at that level of wealth. Um, kind of when I look at movies, I, I'm looking at it from the perspective of not um, did it give me something different, but did it give me real? And I feel like this was that population's movie and they did it the way that they wanted to do. And I feel like they, they did it in a good job. I, I like the feel goodness of it, but I also like that it touched on some of the issues and it wasn't so heavy in doing it. Cause I don't always want to see that, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. when we were talking about, you know, in the previous session, when we were talking about the woman King, um, that movie has a, a myriad of emotions and some of them are heavy, but, 
the parts that you think would hurt you, you don't have to see that. So mm-hmm. I can appreciate that same sort of thing in this movie as well. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that's about it, guys. Y'all know we don't have quotes for the movie, but the the movie itself gave you one. Yes. <laughs> so uh, rewind back to the beginning to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. All right, guys. Y'all comment, like, and share, and subscribe to YouTube. We'll see y'all next time. <laughs>